What's up guys? Good day and welcome to another episode on the show Behind the Scenes in Health with Dr. Ron. So are you a healthcare professional thinking of how to pivot into health tech and you don't know how? Well, one of the ways you can get into health tech is by getting a degree in health informatics. So you might just stick around to the end of this video and I'll put you through the process. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And thank you for coming around and I hope you enjoy the content uh, you're going to watch. And if you're a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you for sticking around because of you, we keep pushing this uh, amazing content out there. So today I'm going to be talking about health informatics. Uh, it's one of those degrees that can open the doors into a health tech career for you. And it opens a lot of opportunities out there. So I'll be talking about what it is. What are the schools, particularly in the UK, that you can attend? Uh, what are their tuition? Are their scholarship available? Workplace placement? And some of the prospective career opportunities that you could potentially do with a degree in health informatics. So stick around, let's dive in. So what's health informatics? Now, healthcare is moving at an amazing speed or pace uh, because of the advent of technology, I mean, Tech has been deployed into healthcare to sort of improve processes, uh, drive quality changes, and all of that. And health informatics is a rapidly developing field that utilizes information technology to organize and analyze healthcare data to sort of improve collaboration, improve outcomes between patients, providers, and all that. So basically, it's all about data information and knowledge and what we do with it to improve healthcare outcomes and incidentally it's been sort of one of the drivers of you know better healthcare reforms globally so being an informatician is actually a good thing to be and talking about advent of internet high-speed data voice recognition wireless and mobile technology i mean we healthcare professionals have more tools at, at our disposal to, you know, sort of improve the way we deliver healthcare to people. So who can study health informatics? I get that question a lot. Now, basically, I mean, if you're coming from the healthcare background, I think you're already qualified to take a degree in health informatics. So if you're a nurse, if you're a doctor, if you're an optometrist, you're a med lab scientist, a technician, I mean, whatever care of healthcare, professional you are you can't take a degree in health informatics i mean because there's something for everyone i mean there's something called pharmacy informatics there is something called nursing informatics and the rest of them which i could i will do in subsequent videos so basically i'm just trying to say there is something for everyone if you're coming into health informatics right so where are the schools so for the purpose of this video i'm just going to stick around to schools in the united kingdom uh, probably in subsequent videos, I could tell you about other countries where it's also studied. So we'll just stick to the UK for now. And please, quick disclaimer, I'm not doing adverts for any school or neither was I paid to advertise some of these schools. It's just for information purposes. And I'll be sharing the links to the course pages on the different university pages so that you can take your time to also, you know, look at them in detail and see what you'll be learning before you get into the program so the first school here on my list is the university of west london and uh, the title of the page is health informatics now the funny thing is sometimes the title of the course will change because sometimes you see health and biomedical informatics or they they merge health informatics with some other course it's still basically almost the same thing so the first one university of west london there's swansea university there is University of Central Lancashire. There is University of Manchester. There is a King's College, uh, King's College London, and there is a University of Surrey uh, that offers health and biomedical informatics. So I try to break it down to look at um, what are the requirements to get into the program to really sort of make it easy. So for University of West London, like I said, the title is Health Informatics. And as at the time of doing this video, the tuition fees is not available on the website. In terms of IELTS, they require IELTS academic 6.5 overall, 
with a minimum of 5.5 in each of the different components of the IELTS exam. And the program is for one year full time. There's no work placement. And yes, there are scholarships available. So you might just want to check that out on the website. Next one is University of Surrey. Uh, they offer health and biomedical informatics. Fees at a time of shooting this video or recording this video is to be communicated. So it's not on the website. So IELTS, yes, required band seven overall with minimum of seven in each element of the IELTS test. So you could take the course one year full time or two years part time. Work placement, no scholarship, yes. So you need to check the scholarships that are available on the school website. The third one is Swansea University, Title Health Informatics. Uh, school fees is £18,850 as at the time of checking the website. IELTS requirements, yes, academic 6.5 with minimum of 6.0 in each of the components. So you can do the course one year full time or two years part time. Work placement, no. Scholarships available, yes. Then University of Central Lancashire, still health informatics. Fees not available. IELTS, yes, 6.5, but they didn't specify the minimum requirement for in each of the different bands. So this particular university offers this as distance learning or online learning, and it's three years part-time. So you may want to put that into consideration if you're applying. Work placement, no. Scholarships, yes. Then University of Manchester, they offer health informatics. As a time of checking, school fees is not available or the tuition fees is not available on the website. And interestingly, I think uh, they offer this course in collaboration with the with UCL, that is University College London. IELTS, yes, band seven. You can take this course one year full time or two to five years part time. Work placement available, no. And uh, scholarships not available as at the time of checking, which is today. Then the last one is King's College London, where they offer applied statistical modeling and health informatics. The school fees is quite huge. That is £34,920. That's huge. So they are asking for IELTS, but 7.5 overall with minimum of 7.0 in all components, which is quite, quite competitive. The course is for one year full time. Is there work placement? No. Is there scholarship available? Yes. So you just, just need to check that out on the school website. Now, after the degree, what happens? What are the career prospects or opportunities that lie out there? So I've brought out a couple of them, which I will still talk about in subsequent episodes. Um, here you could decide to move into clinical informatics, you can move into clinical bioinformatics. You can decide to go into education and training of persons or health records and patient administrator. You could move into information and communication technology. You could decide to become you know, health information management specialist. You could decide to focus on libraries and knowledge management. You could become a project manager or a program manager. Or you could also decide to become a clinical informatics data analyst. So these are some of the job roles or opportunities that are out there for someone who has a degree in uh, health informatics, right? I mean, this list is not exhaustive, but I just thought I'd share some of the ones I know off the top of my head right now at the moment. So, I mean, you can see that um, there are a lot of opportunities that lie in the health tech space, particularly if you have a degree in uh, health informatics. So if you've been thinking if it's the right degree for you to do, I mean, yes, I, I don't think you're far from the truth. So you can go ahead and, you know, pick because, I mean, the opportunities are endless as we see every day because tech is driving healthcare now. So, I mean, this is the best time to come into the industry and um, enjoy yourself. And a lot of them also, you know, offer good um, work-life balance with good pay significantly. So it's um, something worth considering. 
when I talk about them in detail in other episodes, I'll probably now break them down into bits, how much they're earning and all of that. In fact, I think we have a video coming on on the 25 salaries or salaries of 25 different tech roles uh, where we're going to explore how much each job role earns across the globe. You know, UK, US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Germany. So let's see what it looks like and how lucrative it really is, right? So that brings me to the end of this um, episode. I mean, if you've liked this video, or you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel and keep sharing the channel. I mean, if you're working in any of these areas, you can drop us a comment. What's your experience been like? Are you enjoying it? I mean, if you also want to come on the show to share your experience, I mean, we're open to that because a lot of persons are looking for mentorship. And one of the ideas behind this is to shed light on some of these areas so that you know, other healthcare professionals can actually see, yes, I mean, there's light in these areas that these guys are going into. So thank you for watching. Until I come your way in the next episode, I still remain your host, Dr. Ron. So stay safe, stay blessed, and bye for now. Cheers.